Welcome! This is what this video is about. A voiceover redo of this uh, here arched arbor on a little patch of grass. We don't worry much about materials. Here's yesterday's attempt, which is a, a terrible batch of materials. But generally speaking, the method of creating all of these rectangles or elongated 3D cubes is not using 3D cubes. There's a secret technique that's not a big secret, but we sort of carve out the negative space and we end up not with a bunch of uh, image textures to create the trellis, but with real geometry that catches the light and the shadow like this routing in the wood that happens very easily. And the trellis is two layers of horizontal and vertical pieces of wood that fit inside that trellis, uh, inside the frame, uh, the trellis frame, let's call it. And then all of this actual geometry could be very complicated to build with mirrors and array modifiers. We don't use those. We use a couple other tricks to get these pieces of wood casting such great shadows. Forget the color, okay? You've got your own wood textures you can use. But the modeling trick of carving out from a two-dimensional plane that which isn't needed and leaving behind what will result in a 3D view is exactly what this is about. Um, my challenge, of course, was when I photographed this arched arbor that I built over the weekend in my backyard, and I had a good time just thinking, I wonder what is the most uncommon or easy way that I can build this? That is what this video is about. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, or you could learn a little bit more about modeling techniques, this might be the video for you. Get ready. Hello, hi, hola, handle and greeting. This is a Let's Build Something voiceover from me and Blender 2.79 reveals this, the arched arbor that I made yesterday in an hour and 20 minute long video that I didn't have the patience to publish. I think that I can do better. It's not bad the way it is. I wanted to share some modeling tricks, and so now we open Blender, and we can create a ground that is a plane scaled up in edit mode five times. I've applied a grassy texture that more or less mimics the actual grass in my backyard. It's not exactly green. It's not exactly desaturated yellow. It's a variety of dark greens, greens, and a desaturated yellow. There it is. I begin on a new layer, in this case, layer 2. I'm using Cycles Render, so that later we can see what the model is relative to the picture I took of uh, an arched arbor in my backyard. First, this technique involves laying out the geometric block that occupies the space of the object that we're hoping to uh, imitate. In this case, Z is up and down on a piece of paper, and X is left and right on a piece of paper. The Y axis shoots into the distance, as though if you were drawing on a table, shoots in through the distance of your table. That's a good way to look at Blender and keep things consistent when you build models. This cube, the bottom is getting deleted, those faces. Control tab F to select face select mode. Control tab E for the edge, and I pull it up until I get an apex that's more or less pointy. I'm pleased with this point. The whole thing is still a bit squat, but using the letter A, I can select it in edit mode and then press G and Z and move it one on the number pad with enter to rise one blender unit up so the ground is actually at the bottom of this blocking. I do this blocking technique because when you're painting or drawing and sometimes using Blender, according to experts, you move from the general to the specific. Now I'm pulling it up into sort of a phone booth arbor shape that I'm satisfied with, roughly matching it to the one that I made yesterday, and it looks as though I'm pretty consistent, came close. I want it more narrow than it is wide. Now essentially I'm looking at the arbor shape, more narrow than it is wide, and there's yesterday's, which I thought was a little too chubby, a little too uh, not, uh, not narrow enough as you're passing through. So now I'm going to remove four out of eight faces from the uh, big geometric block. This is an interesting part of modeling that I think some of you will get a kick out of. This is four out of eight faces, as you can see right up there. I will XF to delete faces. 
And in doing so, I am left with an object in object mode that's missing a significant amount of information. Shift D duplicates don't do much. Alt D duplicates are clones of the original that change with edit mode changes. So Alt D to make a duplicate of what we have here, this general shape, and then rotate it around the Z axis 180 degrees like this. Enter on the number pad to commit to that change, and now suddenly we can work on one half of it without a mirror modifier. Name it uh, Arbor, which is a good idea. We um, work on half of it, but not a perfect half like a mirror modifier would have us uh, doing. I want to begin with something simple because this is the very essence of modeling something by taking away what doesn't need to be there. In selecting that face, I actually have four edges. Control E will show me what I can do to control those edges. Edge split allows me to select that edge and then pull, uh, select that face and then pull it because all those edges are cut from where they uh, used to be attached. We'll do that again for something else. And uh, you can see that everything else is still attached, but now this is all by itself. I don't want to make it a new object. I just want to have it all by itself within the same object, not attached. I'll use here Control R to add edges. I put my mouse in the right spot and those edges are added not anywhere else but on this brand new uh, you know alone face. I roll the mouse wheel up until I get four lines or edges. These to prevent the sliding you right click and you put it at like position zero. These edges represent the center lines of the ribs there at the top of the arbor. These center lines, because they're still a part of this brand new face, the transform orientation can switch now to the normal from global. It allows that manipulator widget to point out correctly so that if I want to change them or scale them along that slope, I can click and drag the scale manipulator widget and grab them along the move manipulator widget into a better location for the finished model. Now these are just the center lines. The way to make them into the actual ribs is to bevel them out. The edge edges don't bevel, so that's why we created four inside that face. So here we are, control B and then moving the mouse to um, add some depth there to that bevel. And we switch over to face mode with control tab F and I right click select and then use shift to add to the selection faces we don't need. X, F for faces. What we're left with now are the very important ribs that make the top of the arbor. And that is modeling through sort of like cutting away parts of a polygon that we don't need. It's also better than the array modifier because uh, the angle is already perfect for the slope of this roof. This transform orientation gets a little glitchy if you're doing too many pieces of geometry. I still have the good fortune to um, have global versus normal working correctly because it all came from one plane and I haven't moved it violently everywhere. In order to get the grab the rotate and the scale manipulators there. What I did was those little icons at the bottom, I used shift and then left clicked to add them to the manipulator widget in the center. Uh, for me, it's very convenient. I like to see them all at the same time and uh, you can hide and reveal it with the control space bar <laughs> button combination. Well, before we play too much more, let's give that original some depth. So it looks as though we are building something out of wood. These are one by two pieces of wood. I haven't measured anything. I'm not using actual blender units or empirical or metric. I'm just doing it all by eyeball. And it looks like 0.043 is the depth with a solidify modifier that I want to use. This is not new geometry and it does not propagate over to the clone, that Alt-D clone. So I do have to select the clone and then shift right click select the original and then link the two together with Control-L and choose modifiers 
to add the modifier to the clone. This done, I can now continue working happily on the original. Anytime I change the modifier, I do have to go into the clone and change its modifier all by itself. Once inside edit mode with the tab button, my normal transform orientation shows me that it's not unglitched because I haven't changed the geometry. I've just added a modifier so that Z is still reasonably trustworthy for being an actual uh, perpendicular measure against the faces that I have selected. And I pull that away from what will be the apex just so it barely touches because this is real lumber. It doesn't actually pass through other pieces of lumber. There's no, um, uh, you know, there's no routing or dovetailing or anything to let that happen. So I just sit it right up there. In real life, I used screws to put those there. Now, this is control R along that bottom edge. And with the control key, I was able to edge slide 0.7 blender units. Down where it says View, Select, Add, and Mesh, measurements will appear. Control R lets me add an edge. And now, when I slide that edge, I can hold the Control key and read negative 0.7 blender units. Ta-da! Now I know for sure that that edge and the second edge are actually um, symmetrical to each other across the center line. Still didn't want to use the mirror modifier, didn't have to use the mirror modifier. These are going to be the legs of the uh, arbor. Now adding that top piece of wood is a little bit of a problem because you can see that adding an edge, it morphs to the shape of the edge it gets closest to. I want that top part to be a straight piece of wood and I want it to be a little bit thicker than the legs. So this is the part we're making now, what I'm going to call the uh, the apex. I want it to be up top. So I can use Control R and with or without the Control button, push it all the way to the top. Now, just to be on the safe side, I switch to a global transform orientation and use the Z to pull it down. And it maintains the angle of the top of the apex, which I needed. I, I don't want it to morph to a horizontal angle or a 180 degree angle. From a front view, even in perspective mode, it's very easy to make sure that that apex portion of uh, wood pieces is thicker than the leg portion of pieces. <clears throat> so the Z axis that's global helps me pull it up and down. There we go. I feel satisfied that it's thick enough versus the legs, which are a little bit more narrow. And uh, it is straight across the bottom, although it has a little bevel on that hard corner I'm going to ignore. But it's straight across the bottom, and the legs are straight across the top. This is real lumber. They didn't make this in 3D and then render it out in plastic. So I'm going to pretend that I've built this in a sawmill, and I need straight lines. Control tab v puts me into vertex select mode i can right click select a vertex shift right click select the other vertex i need those two to be connected to make a straight line the letter j gets it done and it creates new vertices where they're required super handy now i've got the straight lines for the apex and the legs that i needed and i can now right click select all the faces i don't need anymore when I tab into object mode, all the changes I've made propagate to the clone. This is going to be a trellis. I don't need that top face. Uh, you don't need yours either, but on the same trick, select this face, and then what I'll do is control E to see how I can control the edges. Edge split was the last thing we did in that menu, so our mouse is kind of right there anyway. And now that face, if you reselect it, is already separate, and uh, we want to scale it down a little bit. So that the machine, uh, so that the machine edge of this piece of wood is inside the solidify modifier of the other piece of wood, and the other piece of wood is sort of that depth. Is like we're pretending it's a one by four piece of wood, and uh, we don't want to have the wood passing through pieces of wood at some weird impossible, um, you know, depth. By selecting it, I want it to be thinner than the legs and the apex. So I can separate the letter P and choose by selection. 
when I tab into object mode, it disappears from the clone because it's no longer a part of that object. So very importantly, our origin here has not moved. It stayed exactly where it's supposed to be. Leave it there. Now select with the yellow edge, the part that will become the trellis, Alt D to make a clone copy, and then rotate around the Z axis 180 degrees. Enter on the number pad and there you go. You have now more control over uh, the trellis pieces, which we're going to name T-R-E-L-L-I-S, trellis. And the other one is going to stay a funny name, but that's okay. Um, this is supposed to be thinner, so maybe half is thick, right? So I can go to the thickness. And a second, this is a voiceover, sorry. I thought we were going to go to the thickness. We're not. We're going to take a look at a render. There it is, a render. A little bit like a very not private outhouse. That's what that looks like. Very nice. Very, very private in the backyard. Like a personal thing. Really indicates summer is here. Okay, now the thickness. Tabbing into edit mode. Any changes I want to make to this piece and hope to have go to the clone, I need to make those changes in edit mode. I can move it in. And then when I tab into object mode, back into edit mode, the clone piece moves in. But when I change the thickness by dividing its current thickness by two, no matter how much I tab back and forth into object and edit mode, it will not change in the clone. I have to go in and change the modifier of the clone all by itself because the clone clones geometry, not modifiers. I think you can handle that information, right? Meanwhile, control tab E shows me in the arbor that the apex is still attached to the legs. If I shift right click select both of those edges that should be split, I can press control E and split them. Now I can work them both independently. The way to pick just the leg, grab a piece of it and then press control L and that selects everything that is linked to the initial selection. Likewise, the apex. If I select just the edge that was split before having moved it anywhere, how do I know which edge I've selected? Have I selected an edge for the leg or an edge for the apex? Only control L will tell you for sure. Aha, the leg. That's an unpredictable thing. So it's good to go and select some other part of the object and then use control L to make sure that you get uh, what you want. Now I'm going to alt right click select the inside edges and shift alt right click select the inside edge of the other leg. And I'm going to use SX to scale it in on the X axis. I'm going to do it not to where the points match, but to where it's inside a little bit. Alt, right click, select, and then shift. Alt, right click, select the outside of the other leg and S, X again. I'm not measuring. I don't know if I end up with four inches or not, but I want to get that outside of the leg under the uh, initial rib that's on the uh, ceiling. But now I can clearly see vertices um, and where they belong, and that's important. I want to right click select a vertex vertex hold down shift right click select the next one and then press alt m and merge anything i've selected to the last vertex i selected in this case it's just a first one and a last one so merging at the last one is pretty easy but here it's a one and a two and a last so now it will take both of those one and two, and merge them at last. There are other ways to dissolve vertices and uh, uh, to uh, you know, optimize the mesh, but uh, this is a way that has worked really well for me, and I don't mind pressing Alt-M. So a selection or a shift, right-click, select, select, shift, right-click, select, Alt-M, at last, and done. So that's uh, minimus for me. It's just that easy. So now we definitely have legs, and we definitely have a... Um, uh, a uh, an apex. I do want to select the legs and bring them up, 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 because when I built this thing, they are not only up high near that rib, but they are behind the apex. So I need a stacking of sorts. These two pieces of wood should stack on top of each other. Now, 
one vertex of the apex, control L, and then uh, the Y axis to bring it forward. Bring it forward to the party. It is a summertime asset that needs to show up. I just want to make sure that it's forward enough that uh, light and shadow and ambient occlusion can barely gather between these two pieces of wood. It's kind of the magic of um, building something like this. Now, the legs are routed. Look at this. In real life, the picture of what I built, they built this as cheaply as possible. They had a 1x4 and a router at the factory, and they just ran this 1x4 through the router. That router holds the trellis. I need to make this router, and then got to be on the bottom of the trellis and the top of the trellis. Um, it's an important detail, and I'm very big into ambient occlusion and light and shadow gathering in those tight corners. So the way to make this tight corner, after tabbing out and tabbing in, is to address the legs with Control R. And do the second one right here. Don't move it. Don't bevel it. Don't roll the mouse wheel. Right click to put it at position zero. And we want to uh, switch over to edge mode. So that's Alt Tab E. And now one of them's already selected. So you can see that Shift, right click, select the other one. Now I want to be very sneaky about this. I don't want to extrude but I need to get some faces available to create the routing. So now I'm beveling control B and I want to make it less than a third. That looks to me like less than a third. I will control tab F and with these faces selected here, the outside ones, I can maintain some economy because I'm still not building 3D geometry. I am simply making a duplicate of two dimensional planes. So shift D to make that duplicate and then the letter Y to constrain it on the Y axis. See, that's just loosey goosey. But now with Y, I can move my mouse and get the routing correct all the way up and down that leg without having disturbed the solidify modifier. If you extrude using the solidify modifier, it gets really unpredictable and weird and the thickness gets um, crazy. This way, look, we have a great router that picks up light, picks up shadows, fits into the entire thing, and it's less and less like an outhouse and more like an arched arbor, which is the intention. Then uh, the trellis, ah oh, yeah, the trellis, it's still a bit thick and it needs to fit inside the routing. Any changes, remember, when you're using a clone, any changes to the original must be made in edit mode. So if you feel like moving it to a new location like this, move it in edit mode. When you tab back into object mode, the clone will echo those changes. And it's just sort of fitting it inside the routing. It's now turned out to be a bit thick. That is okay. I'll just go ahead and uh, start making that number small. As I make the number small on the original, I've got to right-click select and then uh, change the modifier on the um, on the clone. So how are we going to make a trellis? First, working general to specific, I want to make sure that this plane, this single face, is kind of in the right spot because it is going to give birth to all of the verticals and all of the horizontals. And uh, I am half satisfied with the way this goes. I'm showing you here that uh, the edges of the trellis are five going up and down and seven going left and right. And they fit nicely inside the border of the legs. The problem with beveling edges is you cannot bevel an edge on the edge. You can bevel an edge that is inside the polygon because it has a location to bevel outward too. So this still looks a bit tall to me and I'm going to change it soon. This is seven going left and right and now five because I used the mouse wheel to uh, scroll. These are center lines. And now with all of the edges selected, I will prove to you that the outside edge does not bevel by pressing Control-B and beveling outward until I get something yeah, more or less thicker, a little maybe thicker, that is good. And this is going to end up as two layers for a trellis. Changing the overall proportions, 
I hit A to select everything, I move it up, shrink it down along the Z axis. It's just, it's not quite as, I don't know, it seems a little high to me today. I did this yesterday and uh, they're not squares inside the trellises. Uh, in those, those negative spaces aren't squares, so I leave it as a rectangle this time as well. Now, a duplicate, shift D and then X to move that duplicate along the X axis has given me the ability to create two layers. One for the vertical, one for the horizontal. By selecting the edge rings, control alt, right click select, I can get rid of the faces that include the edge that didn't play nice and give us a stick for the trellis. That's why we created all those center lines inside the polygon, because now you can see that by control alt right click selecting those which should not be there. I now have trellis wood on the outside edge. That's the only way to get it done. So now I've got to carefully kind of pick out the uh, the inside, you know, the, the negative space for the horizontal ones here. And it is that easy. X and F. Control Alt right click select as an edge ring as opposed to an edge loop. But when it's straight lines, it's a little tough to explain. So I'm just going to change it to 0.017 so there's a little gap between the horizontal and vertical pieces. And because we rotated this around the Z axis, its clone has the vertical pieces on the outside of the arbor as well. That's brilliant. It's what we need. And it is like a mirror modifier. You could have used a mirror modifier, but we were already so busy using clone as a fun experiment. Now what I want to do is scale this thing outward to replace the space its original polygon once took. I can scale with S and then constrain that scaling to happen on the Y and Z by pressing Shift X. This will make sure that our two pieces stay inside the routing. See that? So again, S to scale it and then Shift X to make sure it's only growing uh, along the Y and Z. Blender, uh, the next versions of Blender are going to have some weird shortcut for constraining um, changes and scaling and rotations. I just use a keyboard shortcut. And here's what we've got rendered. Pretty darn convincing as an arbor. It's not yet arched. This upcoming is the arch part. Part of this arch in real life was made from this routed wood. So I'm going to control tab E and grab just the edges on the bottom of one leg and control L to grab that one leg and a shift D and the letter X to move the duplicate to the center of the um, to the center of the mass here. Uh, there is no general to specific. It's just doing this. Now I'm going to grab the bottom ones here and use the global Z axis and grab or move these selected edges upward and five on the number pad to get into an orthographic view. You're, if you're trying to build something like this, aiming for about a two to one rectangle in ratio here. Remember, we've got three different planes and the bottoms have to all match up. So E and Z helps us extrude downward to about one and a half the length of that first two to one rectangle. I mean, this is all unmeasured, very loose. Now Z to get into a wireframe mode, I'm going to press the letter C on my keyboard for a circle select tool and a left mouse button click and drag highlights and selects whatever's under it. Right click turns off the circle select tool. And now I'm subdividing the edges that were vertical and I've created for myself one subdivided horizontal edge across all three of those planes. Now, this edge will give us um, a, uh, a, a couple edges on the side. I can only select those really by moving sideways to show you. That center part is the routing. So now I'm squeezing this in significantly there so that it's close 
to the routing but not interrupting the routing. And now I just sort of scribble with the C and pick some up when I'm done. I right click out, hit Control L to finish selecting that piece. I'm going to use G and grab and move it kind of up here, kind of there, and then R to rotate it. And the big key for rotating and grabbing is I want that top corner to be near the ribs and I need our newly subdivided horizontal line there to not collide with the leg that you can see it's right up against. And then we're gonna handle that corner. That newly subdivided edge is very close to the leg but not touching, which is great. And just get it right about there. And then the actual piece, I mean, this really was, it was the first piece I had to put together and it was really bizarre, but it seems to be an important part of keeping this thing stable. Now I'm gonna do a uh, control tab V to get into vertices and I'm gonna handle this collision. And I can circle select in wireframe mode right through and get them all because there are two vertices in line with each other. And now shift V because we're off axis. We can't just move it along the X. This is as though we just ripped the wood at an angle. And now we have it uh, not colliding with the leg, which is very cool. And from experience, since I built the thing, I'll tell you, it's also very accurate-ish. It's, it's mostly accurate. Select the whole thing, control L, because you already had some of the vertices selected of it. Just make sure you get all three parts there because it takes three planes solidified to make the routing. Go into mesh and choose to symmetrize. When you symmetrize, press the letter T so that your tool shelf is open and you can see that symmetrize went from a negative X to a positive X. All variations are available. We want, in this case, positive X changes over on the negative X. Ta-da! So there, that's like double down. Your mirror modifier, your cloning rotated around the Z and symmetrizing across an axis. It's pretty cool. And that symmetrize happens around the origin of the object in question. We have not messed with the origin. So it looks like it's around the 3D cursor, but that's only coincidental. Our origin is where it belongs uh, from a creation standpoint, being at the 3D cursor. Look at that thing. Man, that's beautiful. Okay, that's nice. I'd walk under that. I would. Uh, in real life and in 3D, I would do it. There's a tiny cross piece that finishes making the round of an arch up at the top. Uh, it's a piece unlike all the others, so I want to make it in kind of a different way. Have you taken a vertex and shift D duplicated it yet? Do it now. You can take that Apex's vertex and move it along the Z and X, and I'm, I'm out of X's right there. Uh, but now, if you shift Y, you'll constrain the movement of that duplicated vertex to just the Z and X. Put it near the apex edge. Remember, we're making a new piece of wood that goes over your head when you walk through this thing. Uh, e extrudes that vertex, but I want it across the X axis so I can press the letter X and make absolutely sure that it goes uh, extruding in that direction. Now, control L, we have two vertices and an edge between them. If and when I extrude this, I am no longer extruding two vertices. I am extruding an edge to make a face. Our face will be affected by the solidify modifier. Edges are not. Ta-da! It's going the wrong way, not a problem. These four vertices make up a face. Control L and then the T. I can look at the Tools tab, Create tab, and the Shading UVs. Simply flip the direction of normals on a face and it is done. The modifier flips it in the right direction with everything else. Now I'm just going to sort of shape this to uh, form an arch in a very basic way. Pushing it close and... Uh, I'm building this, if you hadn't noticed, on the negative X side. So, the, the bend upward here that makes kind of the round part that you pass through is um, it's poorly represented in real life, so I'm not going to go out of my way to, to you know, really sink my teeth into this here. I'm going to move this control R edge up because I know that when I... Um, straighten things out like this and then I can use the x-axis and just push it around because the top is straight I know that I can control B 
and uh, bevel that hard angle and it begins to smooth out. It's just a matter of aesthetically, where do you want it? And you could do a fleur de lis, you could do a heart, you could do the, uh, the spade from a deck of cards. Have a good time with this part. You could do a flower, it doesn't matter. This is ornamental and um, I just get to a point where I, I just feel like leaving it. I will mesh symmetrize. The most recent thing we did was a positive X to a negative X. In this case, we need to switch the direction and try going from negative to positive. Any overhang will be deleted. It's great. And now it looks, I need the top a little bit higher. So I can just alt right click select the top bunch of vertices, which give me all those edges. And then scale it along the X axis. This is so much easier than trying to deal with a 3D object. We're only working with a two-dimensional object that Blender has solidified into a 3D object. And voila, look at that arched arbor. Now it looks more like an arch than what I had worked on yesterday. Um, yesterday's was, uh, was not that nice. And in real life, mine isn't this nice. Pretty shape. Kind of neat looking. There's yesterday's. Look at that. So close. And I'm just eyeballing everything. Wow. I am Mr. Consistency. Two details to finish up. The routing continues. So I control tab E, get those bottom edges, control L, get everything linked to my selection. Shift D to make a duplicate, X, uh, RX to rotate that duplicate, and then 90 on the number pad, enter, rotates at 90. So the routing is upward, which means I've just created the part that's on the bottom of the trellis. I'm going to move this so that the machined edge of the wood that I just uh, duplicated matches but does not quite overlap the uh, the surface of that leg and back I just move the whole thing down and rather try rather than trying to scale it into position um, let me see I want to get more of this and as it down a little bit down a little bit it doesn't bury the trellis it just it just sort of gives the trellis a hug there you can see that some of the trellis is visible over the frame and that adds uh, like I say before a lot of light and shadow to a 3D model, and in real life, here we go, you can see the edge of the trellis is very much over the frame, more so perhaps than I've done here. All right, now we're still in edit mode, come over here, and these edges are all that need to move, so right-click selecting and then shift to add to that. Along the Y axis, I will G, and once again, my cut edge now, my machined edge right to the kind of sort of right there, okay. That needs to control L to pick up the whole thing. And how can I get it to be symmetrical? You know by now. I'm going to do the mesh. I'm going to choose symmetrize. I'm going to go positive X to negative X. And now I've got my two legs highlighted, my two bottom frame parts. Uh, Shift D and Z to grab those duplicates upward. R, X, 180 to turn them and now they are the top of the frame with the routing once again just a hug not burying the trellis so pleased how fast that goes tabbing into object mode everything becomes just darling darling wonderful as i'm watching this it's just occurred to me that i think i have made too many top and bottom frames on the trellis if you watch this and you pick up on that before i did you are a keen man we made the bottom, and then we made a symmetry on the other side. We didn't have to make that symmetry. There you go. This is your summertime model. There it is. It's very pretty, very white. It's also very easy to unwrap this. In edit mode, before we unwrap it, do control tab E, get into uh, edges there, and split that top center edge of the apex. Now, control tab F, get into faces A, select all those faces, U, and make the first selection just unwrap. UV editing layout happens with control, right, 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 or a drop down menu from the top. Here it is, unwrapped. All of these pieces, some vertical, some horizontal. We want them all horizontal. A, deselect everything. And now, 
Control Tab V to make sure that you are selecting vertices. C for your circle select tool. Grab those vertices of the objects that are vertical and use Control L to help finish the job there where it's too tight and then R and then 90 and enter on the number pad. G to move uh, your horizontal pieces so that they're not quite overlapping and then B to border select and a mouse wheel to deselect whatever's in that border G finish the job so everything is horizontal and this is more like you've fabricated wood and run it through uh, you know ripping and routing uh, because the grain of wood should go with the length of course unless you really need everything to just break <laughs> and uh, who needs that this summer there it is, UV editing layout versus the default layout, which is the control button and the right or left arrow button four times. Does the same thing. I love my keyboard shortcuts. Now it's unwrapped. I'm going to give it a material. It's going to be a very basic white material here. Let me just change this to, uh, let's see, yesterday's was uh, something. This is Arbor 2 is what it is today. Let us click and change the white to a wave texture shift f3 up in the outliner shows us the material node editor with material node tree type user preferences make sure that your add-ons include node 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 wrangler check good close it left click select the wave texture control t gives you the mapping nodes plug in the uv socket from the generated socket and now when you look at a material view, it's weird. Go into the mapping node and remember to leave it on point. As we've unwrapped it, it's as though we're looking at a piece of paper and we need to kind of turn the paper along the Z axis, which is the axis we are looking through. Doing this minus 45 degrees creates horizontal lines from the wave texture we made sure the mapping has all these guys going horizontally left and right change the scale and distortion and detail scale as you see fit um or <laughs> just use actual better materials for pieces of wood we made that edge split up here because i did not want an l-shaped piece of wood i wanted two pieces of wood that are joined at a 90 degree angle so you'll see the texture does not follow across that's um and it wouldn't follow across anyway it would uh it would be wrong if you hadn't made that cut so that's a really important detail that i wanted to make sure i had at the end of the video this has been a blast and um have a look here at uh the final results of using this wave texture to combine color the color is a mix rgb that i get with a shift a and uh, i go from like a yellow i click and drag to the uh, you know yellow into the white and did you know you could do that and then switch that second yellow over to an orange now it's a mix of two colors but how will it mix based on the factor of this wave texture which has all sorts of different numbers and it's the whole thing is weird i i just uh you probably have wood texture that you're happy to use i never got to match the color yesterday to the photograph because it's like every time i made it orange the photograph looked yellow every time i made my model yellow the photograph looked orange so i just Today, I don't care. Now we have a white painted trellis inside a um, gorgeous little uh, orange yellow or yellow orange uh, arched arbor. The grass is a pretty neat mess of noise and basic color. So there's green, there's that pale yellow I talked about, and then a little bit of dark green. These are the nodes. It's very simple. If we were to grow hair or emit particles, they would adopt this color, uh, especially um, as strand, if you did hair. And uh, it would be kind of realistic looking, the color, because there's a photograph and you can see grass is not just a sheet of green. Um, I didn't make it very carefully, but uh, I, I got the ideas there. That's really about modeling a trellis. And there you go. You guys are fantastic in the way you watch and the way you like and comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. It gets me going. I want to make more of these summertime assets. So please encourage it. And we will make more things this summer for a great modeling grill or something. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.